In this video, we're moving on to collate the analysis. So, so far we've taken the results and translated them using uh, an if formula into win, loss or draw. And in the second video, we've set up these columns and got the team name appearing in the right column according to the result in the game. So now, if we get into the spreadsheet, we're looking on the collation sheet to try to produce this lovely collated analysis. That's what we're going to do in this video. We want to analyze this sheet, look at each column, and very simply, logically speaking, for each of these columns, home win, all the way through to away loss, for each column, how many times does each team name appear in each column? And that tells us how many wins, losses, uh, draws each team has. So that's what we're gonna do uh, in this video. Let's start on the collation sheets. And again, take a step back and try to think in English, clearly and logically, what we're trying to do. So we've got this structure set up where we've got six columns and the structure is replicated on the sheets. It's the same on the data sheet as it is, as it is on the collation sheet. Now in this video, the importance of that is going to become apparent. And for each column, as I said at the beginning of the video, we want to know how many times does each team name appear in each column. So for example, Arsenal home win column, we want to look at the home win column and count the number of times that Arsenal appears in that column. In a logical sense, that's all we're trying to do. But if we describe it like that, say it out loud, it should make the formula building easier. So you might be thinking what formula is going to help us to do that. We want to count uh, the number of cells that uh, meet a condition. And our condition is that the team name appears in that cell. So what formula might help us do that? Well, let's try count if. So I'm going to start the formula now. Equals count if. Count if is going to count the number of cells in a range that meet a certain criteria. That's what the formula is asking for. A range to look at and asking us to specify a criteria. So what's the range? Well, the range to look at is going to be the data sheet and the whole column on the data sheet. So to begin with, the whole home win column. That looks good. Then I'm hitting the collar key, comma key rather, going back to the collation sheet. And then the second uh, component of this formula, uh, Excel is asking for the criteria. So it's saying count the cells that conform to this criteria. So which cells do you want to count? We want to count the cells uh, that contain the value in cell C4, which is Arsenal, but we're just going to reference cell uh, C4. And then again, we've got to think about uh, relative, absolute, partial, absolute references. What's going to help us here? Well, with this formula, we're going to copy paste it down this table and copy paste it across this table. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind when we're thinking about references. And the a good reference to use anyway, or the one we'll try first, um, for the range, we'll use a pass, partial absolute reference. And as you can see, we're fixing the row reference there. So we're fixing how far up and down Excel looks. It's always going to look at the same set of rows. But we're letting the columns move across. That should become clear in a second how that works. And then for the, um, the team name reference, again, partial absolute reference that fixes the column should be what we need in this case. That's what I think anyway. As always, got to test it, just see what happens. Okay, so it's telling us that Arsenal have 12 home wins. And we're going to test that in a second. But firstly, let's drag this across the table. And let's just see if it looks, you know, the results look reasonable. Okay, well, I know there's 38 games in a Premier League season. So I'm going to put a quick sum formula in here just to add up all of the outcomes from Arsenal games. Does it equal 38? Yes, it does. So that's a good start. Just uh, drag that formula down. Yep, yeah, we've got 38 uh, every time. So this seems to, be, seems to be working well. Let's complete this test and let's look at the actual Premier League table uh, from 2015-16. Just looked it up on Google here. And we can see Arsenal have 20 wins, 11 draws and 7 losses. So 20 wins for Arsenal. We're saying they have 12 home wins and 8 away wins. So that equals 20. So 20 wins and 11 draws, 
four draws at home, seven draws away, that seems to work. And then um, seven losses for Arsenal, just here. Arsenal, three losses at home, four losses away. So that seems to make sense. Let's test another team. Let's test the champions, Leicester. Uh, so 12 plus 11 wins, so 23 wins. Yeah, that seems to make sense. And then let's just look at losses. One loss at home, two losses away, three losses in total. Okay, good. So this formula seems to be working well. We've tested it uh, against the Premier League table there. Let's just go through uh, the formula and in particular uh, the references. So the first formula we put in is referencing column G. Now what columns are the other formula referencing? That's column G on the data sheet. So column G on the data sheet is the home win column here. So what would we expect the other columns uh, to reference? Uh, so let's look at column E and the formula here refers to column H on the data sheet. The next formula refers to column I. Next formula refers to column J. So you can see the formulae are moving across. That range is changing uh, for each column. Uh, it's moving across one column on the data sheet too. So hopefully it's kind of coming clear why it was important to have that structure. Remember we have the same structure, home win, home draw, home loss, the same for the uh, away team. We've got that structure on the collation sheets and on the data sheet too. And that means that it's been very smooth. Well, you, you saw how quickly I was able to put those formulae in. It was very smooth for me to do that because the layout and the structure of the spreadsheet was consistent. And it was a fairly straightforward process. Yep, I needed a few uh, absolute references there. Uh, and partial absolute references, you can see. Um, yeah, let's, let's do another test. Let's, let's look at, at the rows. We can see we've fixed the rows here. Uh, with this partial absolute reference. So the first row refers to um, row 2 to row 381. What's the tenth row going to refer to? What do you think? We can see it refers to the same rows, rows 2 to rows 381. That's because we've used the partial absolute reference here uh, to, fix, to fix that row reference. So all of the um, formulae in this table refer to uh, the same rows. So I really recommend you know going through the formulae in this table and then looking at the collation sheet, looking at the data sheet, trying to understand how those references work. The fixed absolute reference which is the two dollar signs, partial absolute reference for the row and the partial absolute reference for the column. It certainly takes you know it takes a while to understand those ideas and but the best way to understand them as quickly as possible is to look at, at, at the example uh, in the spreadsheet. So that's what we've done in this video, use the COUNTIF formula to count the number of times that uh, the team name appears on the data sheet, and then created this beautiful, uh, powerful, uh, collated analysis. So we're well on the way towards our lead table, we've got a collated analysis now. In the next video, we're gonna look at generating um, other important information, uh, points, counting up the number of goals, we're going to use a summit formula there, and then some other bits and bobs to get us to a place where we're almost ready to present a league table. That's the next step. See you in the next video.